Seneca. I always used to hear about him, but I never really knew his story. So when I learned about it, I was surprised to say the least. And I want to share his story with you briefly in this video. You see, Seneca the Younger was a fantastic philosopher and playwright. He was also the emperor's advisor, but it wasn't all roses as you might think, as you'll find out in just a moment. But for now, let's take a trip back in time to 5 BC in ancient Spain, where it all began for Seneca. Baby Seneca was born into a wealthy family of Italian origin. As a kid, he studied grammar and rhetoric in Rome, but his real passion was philosophy, specifically Stoicism, which is all about achieving peace of mind and tranquility through self-control. Despite his poor health, Seneca travelled to Egypt to be with his aunt for a while, then returned to Rome where he became an amazing orator and even landed a fancy job as a quaestor. But things took a turn when he got mixed up in an adulterous affair with a powerful Roman lady and was banished to Corsica. Luckily, he didn't let the setback get him down. Instead, he spent his exile writing epic treatises and studying philosophy even more. Eventually, he was brought back to Rome by the influential Agrippina the Younger, who saw his literary and intellectual prowess as a major asset to her family's political aspirations. And boy, was she right. Seneca became the tutor and advisor to her son, the future emperor Nero, and married a woman named Pompeia Polina. He also formed a tight friendship with Sextus Afranius Burrus, the prefect of the Praetorian Guard, and together they were an unstoppable force in Roman politics. Now, let's talk about the dynamic duo of Seneca and Burrus, who were like Batman and Robin, but for ruling an empire. When Nero was just a little lad of 12, Seneca took over as his tutor. Together with Burrus, they tried to guide Nero towards wise rule, although they had very different approaches. Burrus was all about efficiency and seriousness, while Seneca was all about principles and philosophy. They were the ultimate tag team, writing Nero's speeches and teaching him about literature and music. But as we know, Nero didn't quite listen to his teachers. After a series of unfortunate events, Nero ended up taking the throne at the tender age of 17. With his mother out of the picture, Nero was free to do whatever he wanted, which was bad news for just about everyone. He accused his mother of plotting to kill him and condemned her to death. The Senate didn't believe Nero's accusations, but unfortunately, they blamed Seneca for helping him write the speech. Things went from bad to worse when Burrus died, supposedly from poison. Seneca knew that his days were numbered and gradually withdrew from public life, focusing on writing treatises instead. He was even implicated in a plot to assassinate Nero, which sealed his fate. Nero ordered him to commit suicide, which just goes to show that even the best teacher can't save their student from their own bad decisions. Let's dive into the final chapter of Seneca's life, where he faced death with the spirit of a true Stoic. You see, Seneca was all about embracing the teachings of the Greek philosopher Epicurus, who believed that death should hold no fear. So when his time came in 65 CE, he gathered his friends and shared heartfelt moments with his beloved wife. She had planned to join him in death, but alas, Nero ordered her to be saved. Now, Seneca was determined to meet his end gracefully, but fate had other plans. He attempted to end his life by slashing his arms, but here's the twist. His frugal diet and delicate frame made it surprisingly difficult for him to shuffle off this mortal coil. So he decided to take a page out of Socrates' book and drank a dose of poison. But the drama didn't end there. Seneca was then placed in a steaming hot bath, which turned into his final sauna session from Hades. The steam filled the air, suffocating him as he bid farewell to this world. It was a dramatic exit befitting a legendary figure. Sadly, his body was denied the honour of traditional burial rites. But fear not, for Seneca's legacy lives on, reminding us all that even in the face of death, we can choose to face it with courage and dignity. Seneca's writings have stood the test of time, influencing countless philosophers and inspiring authors of prose and poetry. But did you know that he was also a playwright? That's right, in addition to his philosophical musings, Seneca penned nine plays, featuring Greek mythological heroes like Heracles, 
Oedipus, and Medea. These tragedies, often referred to as closet dramas, were meant to be read rather than performed on stage. Death was a major theme in Seneca's writings, and he believed that it was a natural part of life's cycle. In fact, he suffered from a respiratory condition and even contemplated suicide. However, he believed that if a person still had hope, suicide was not the answer. To Seneca, the right to end one's life was a fundamental right. As he wrote, Do you think there is anything crueler to lose from life than the right to end it? Despite his struggle, Seneca remained true to his stoic principles and died with dignity. So let Seneca's story be a lesson to us all. Choose the path of wisdom, seize the day, and never underestimate the power of good philosophy. What do you think of Seneca? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.